Well, how do there, chums? Yeah, that little thing that I held up at the start there, that's the closest thing I could find to a demon. Why would I want to hold up a demon? Because Sean Murray has put out a new emoji, people inside the viewerverse, of a little purple demon face. Why a purple demon face, though, hey? Anyways, got my cup of tea. I'm going to have a sip of this, and then we're going to get into some speculation. If speculation isn't for you, you might want to divert your ear holes and your eye peepers. Right, here we go. Lovely jubbly. Yeah. So the cautionary thing, never set expectation around speculation. No. Anyway, let's jump on in over onto the viewer verse, and let's have a look at what I've got for thee out there. Coolio. Boom. Right, so here I am, over on the old Twitter space. Oh, that's a, that's a couple of tabs later. We'll get to that towards the end, people. Okay, so Sean Murray has tweeted out this little purple demon face. Yeah, yeah, at 11.04pm in UK time, I'd just gone to bed, just gone to bed. But this is, this is like the third time in a row now that it's been very close to midnight that Sean is tweeting out these freaking emojis. What time zone is the guy in? I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. Anyways, let's, um, let's make myself a little bit bigger on the old screen. And I went and spoke to ChatGPT, which is like an AI. So I put, when there is a new update for No Man's Sky, Sean Murray, main dev, on Twitter posts an emoji. The community, the players, like to guess what may be in the update based on the emoji. This time the emoji, the emoji is a demon or devil face. What do you feel this emoji could mean for the game? And I put here, sometimes it might just be the update name. Last update in February 2023, he posted a snowflake and the name was Fractal. Cool, yeah, I actually guessed that one. I got that one right. The name I got right. The actual content. Heck no, I didn't. Anyhow, the AI came back with, as an AI language model, I cannot speculate on the intentions or plans of game developers, nor can I accurately predict what the demon or devil face emoji may mean for the next update in No Man's Sky. It could be possible that the emoji is just a fun way to tease the upcoming update, or it could be an, interest, an indication of new features or changes related to a demonic or hellish themes. However, it's important to keep in mind that the emoji can be subjective and open to interpretation, so it's best not to read into it too much until the official announcement is made by the developer. Okay, which is how a lot of people feel inside of the actual verse, including some other content creators that aren't too into speculation. So there we go. That's that's kind of how the AI has come back. But I went back to the AI. <laughs> I said, okay, I like the hellish theme. In No Man's Sky, the game characters often use Greek names. The Atlas, for example, that runs the simulation is technically a god, and the Korvax in-game treat it as such. Say the emoji is the flip side of god, the devil or hell. What Greek references could be drawn on for the update's names? Okay, And yeah, the AI came back. That's an interesting interpretation. And that's all it is. It's an interesting interpretation. We're having a little bit of fun with what this might mean. So it's speculation and fun time. And that's what the emoji stirs up in me, is these sort of little nuances. Anyway, let's move on. If the next update for No Man's Sky does indeed have a hellish or dynamic theme, and the update name continues to draw from Greek mythology, here are a few possible references. Hades. That's the first thing that came to my mind is Hades. Heck yes. Hades is the Greek god of the the underworld and the ruler of the dead. This could be a fitting name for the update that introduces a new underworld or afterlife mechanics. Now, I have to agree, that's the one that I was thinking in my head because we've had these travelers appearing on planet services around their graves for freaking ages, and all the travelers' lore inside of the stations. We even see travelers walking around up there that say some really weird, crazy stuff like multi swords and all sorts of other weirdness, and they've got their own king of that dimension or something. It's like they're not from the same verse as us. And I'm wondering whether we might get some sort of new race come into game. And you know you saw that little tantalising clip at the start of some artwork that I did. Yeah, we'll get to that later because it ties into this very much so. Because that's where my head went straight away when I saw this little purple demon. Cerebus. Cerebus is the free-headed dog that guards the entrance to the underworld in Greek mythology. An update with this name could potentially introduce a new security or defense mechanics for players. 
Oh, I like that idea, yes. Because we've seen gun turrets inside the game files for freaking eons. They have put them at the actual station mouth inside of pirate systems, which shows that there could be defense mechanics there of some kind. I like where you're going with that. Cerebus is quite a nice name, but I still like Hades. Hades is still my number one spot. Styx. The River of Styx in Greek mythology separates the world of the living from the world of the dead. An update with this name could be introduced to new aquatic content for new ways to traverse bodies of water. Okay, well, the other day I did my Monday Members of Mooch, and in there I talked about maybe a new ship type entering into the actual verse, well, like a joint ship, a naval joint ship, which has amphibious properties, but also the ability to launch into air. So it's an aircraft carrier that's also maybe got little subs that can drop off and things like that, or mines and things, or amphibious projects like landing vehicles. So, yeah, it does make me wonder whether there might be some sort of new ship coming into game, and I did wonder whether it might be some sort of space pirate galleon because of what they put inside the game files when it came to Utopia, but can't overly be sure on that one. Yeah, I've done a whole video on maybe there might be space pirate galleons. I put a link up there so you can go watch that one if you think that one's got any sort of, you know, truth to it or or anything to it yeah, that you might want to draw on a bit deeper and have a deeper dive but yeah you know uh, good old tethus tethus inside of the nexus tethus was one of the guardians of the river of sticks in greek mythology there you go people Erebos. Erebos is the Greek god of darkness and shadow. An update with this name could potentially introduce new stealth or shadow mechanics. Well, this AI is trained on data from 2001, I believe. So I don't think we had the cloaking device back then. But <laughs> yeah, we do have a cloaking device now for our person. We can run around and put ourselves into cloak. But maybe it might be that we might get cloaking devices for our ships. I mean, we are constantly being freaking scanned by pirates and sentinel ships now, so why the fudge not? That'd be quite cool as well. Yeah, and we've got this one. Charon. Charon is the ferryman of the dead in Greek mythology who carries the souls across the River of Styx to the underworld. An update with this name could introduce a new transportation or teleportation mechanics. I mean, we can teleport anyway, and we can build base to base, site to site, and little mini um, teleporters. But do you remember the original trailers where there's a, a guy walking around on the planet and he goes through a little teleporter, like a little portal, and it takes him to, a, a, I think, a planet in the same system, but another planet. Just teleport from one planet to another. Maybe it might bring that in. Maybe. Or, or maybe it might fire up some sort of the singularity drive on our freighters. You know, maybe it might go that way and take us through black holes and things. And maybe some event horizon mechanics and maybe the realm of chaos or the void or the realm of glass. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, I actually said, OK, thank you very much. I make content for YouTube. We'll leave this window open and show the ideas in my video. Hope you don't mind being YouTube famous. Not that I have a large following. <laughs> The chat GP team came back and said, you're quite welcome. Yes, you can use me inside of your videos and good luck with your video. <laughs> Lovely chat GPT. Yeah, I do like playing with chat GPT. It was quite interesting. Anyways, but why? Why a purple demon face? Why did he go with a purple demon face when there's other demon faces that you can choose? I mean, hold on. Let's, um, let's just hit reply and let's go into the old emojis. And let's just put in demon or devil and see what comes back. Well, we've got a purple one there. Devil. Is that the only one it's going to bloody give me? It's going to give me a purple demon. All right, fine. I'm fairly sure that there's other different different colours of... Oh, maybe you already get purple on freaking... Um, on, <laughs> on Twitter. Maybe you don't get a red demon inside of freaking Twitter. Okay, well, this next bit might not have any rhyme or reason or meaning, people. <laughs> but here we go. So, yeah. <laughs> I've gone into this because purple inside of the actual game means rarer or bizarre or strange so rare is usually denoted by a purple color inside of game and we've been having visitors come into our settlements for some time and if you manage to translate the text that they bring it's usually purple in color 
And when it is purple in colour, I don't know whether there's any sort of other variants here, but they're usually talking about the void or something very, very ominous when you have visitors to your actual... I did a whole video on this about the purple text, but I can't find it in my freaking video library because I've got so many blinking videos. But yeah, just trust me, it, when they mention the words in purple, a lot of the time when they're translated, it's usually that they're running from something ominous or that they even mentioned the void in the purple text before. So it makes me wonder whether it might be something to do with an alternate realm. But anyhow, moving on, I've done loads of speculation around the different sorts of override and what the override might bring. Now, I don't know whether you can see it on that thumbnail at the top, but there's a new line of text that's been added. Atlas Aeron Surveillance Uplink Functional. And the functional is in purple, so maybe it might have something to do with the, the Atlas Aeron surveillance uplink with inside of the station override. And maybe overriding it, something bad might happen relating to Sentinels or the station. I'm not too sure, but again, it's in purple. So I'm just drawing on the, the colour purple at the moment, people. So we do know that new stations have been found inside of the game files. If you don't know about these new stations, I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. I'm going to hit play on this. I'm going to unmute it. It's just a bit of music. Actually, I've got some music playing right now, haven't I? So you know what? I can just turn that music up a little bit that you can hear right now. And um, actually, I don't need to. I think it's a good volume. And uh, yeah, I'm going to drink some tea while I let you watch some of these new stations because it could just be that new stations are coming into game, people. Here you go. Okay, well, I think you get the point. So inside the game files, there's quite a lot of new station sorts of shells that have been found. In fact, they're all procedural, so they're very different from one another. And a lot of these are all green inside of this video that I made, but they've actually found the actual color palette now. They are, they do come in different colors, but it could just be that there might be a station overhaul to the outside. But I am hoping that they bring something to the interiors as well, because at the moment ships fly through the ceiling and the interior doesn't match these new outer hulls. And I've done a whole video on that as well. So I'll put a link in the top corner there if you want to see all my speculation around what I think might be in the next update based on stations and station overhaul. But back to this strange race. So they did introduce this flesh helmet some time ago, which makes you look like you've been to an infested planet a little bit too long or drunken of the water. Yes. And the answer is this horrific helmet. And I'm wondering if they might bring in a new race that's sort of half biological and half mechanical, but then maybe even play on, you know, all these fallen travelers. Perhaps they become infested and turn into something like this, but perhaps um, we might get that sort of race come into game. Now, Bo Lam is one of the artists for Hello Games, and he actually done some artwork. They didn't have all this in the background, didn't have the station. It just had these guys with all these cables on. And what I did is I got a picture of the station and I sort of merged the two images together. How cool would it be if when you go and hit on up the station override, it does that? I actually put it here. Look, feeling a bit arty today. Use some art from Bo Lam and what we have in No Man's Sky and merge them to make this. Kind of hope that the Realm of Glass brings in Sentinel-like travellers like this. Imagine using the station override and this happening. Oops. <laughs> guess, who, guess who hit like to this bit, this bit of artwork merging? Um, I just did, but I didn't mean to. <laughs> I don't like my own tweets, honest people. Yeah, if I scroll on down here and hit likes, good old Bo Lam actually came back and hit a like on this originally, whether they've unliked it. Let's have a little scroll down and see if Bo is still in there. But yeah, it doesn't mean anything. But yeah, I, it's the first time one of my posters had a like by Bo Lam. Thank you, mate. I love your freaking artwork. I really do. But it got a lot of likes. It got quite a lot of love. You know, 63 likes. It got a couple of retweets. But yeah, 
that is pretty darn freaking cool. I would like to see a new enemy type fall into No Man's Sky. And I would like to see the Realm of Glass and maybe the ability to go and rescue Ariadne because we did have that whole story arc that was written by Je uh, Jeff Buchanan, I believe. Yeah, they actually hired a guy to write this weekend lore where Ariadne goes missing with inside of the void and aboards a dark freighter and disappears in space. I mean, even that ties into some of the recent notions that I've had of maybe having a new giant freighter that's like a space galleon, you know, like a proper sp pirate ship in space. Because, yeah, imagine we go on board something like that and go and rescue her from the realm of glass and bring her back and replace her. And maybe they might add that whole story arc that was beautifully crafted by Jeff Buchanan into game. I'm going by logic and things that are already in game. I don't believe a lot of this is speculation where I'm drawing from too far a left a field. I kind of feel that this could all technically happen but at the same time i don't want to set it as expectation because they all are just ideas it isn't anything concrete but it's my gut feeling on a demon face but at the end of the day people you know we've had sean murray now tweet out a freaking snowflake last time and it was called fractal did it add any fractal math into the game did it have any relevance to what we actually got in game no it was just the title that he decided to give to the update. So even if he does call this Hades, or even if he does call it something crazy, like, I don't know, something to do with hell or purgatory, you know, if he names it purgatory or Hades or something like that, don't, I, I, I don't know. It could just be that they add in another expedition and maybe we might get the solar helmet as a reward. It could be as something as simple as that, people. So don't go and get yourselves overly excited. But if I was putting out a demon face and made it purple, I know what I would be thinking. Well, if I'd be developing. <laughs> <laughs> putting that realm of glass in there because it's in the freaking law yeah and, and making some sort of demonic sort of realm some sort of opposing force to the atlas something that is the root cause of this corruption the 1616 corruption we still don't understand really where it's coming from we're seeing all these infested planets we're seeing mentions of the realm of glass we heard the void being mentioned we know the doppelganger ariadne is standing inside of our nexus right now and she's an imposter there's all these little nuggets all these little breadcrumbs that are inside of the game that are pointing one way one way only that there is an opposing force to the atlas that wants the atlas to crumble and fail and fall and it's causing this infestation it's causing a lot of weird sort of discord with the sentinels and the corrupted sentinels where's it going where's it going Hopefully into a culmination, which is going to be a large update that's going to bring in this void of glass or realm of glass or whatever. Oh, void of glass. Nice. I've just merged them together and made one. <laughs> anyway, people, I've finished my tea, which means I'm out of fuel, <laughs> which means I'm going to be drawing this video to a close, people inside the viewerverse. But I do hope you've liked the speculation. I do hope you take this as being a fun exercise size of thought rather than anything else. This is just ideas wrapped in speculation. And you can see that even ChatGPT got involved and gave us a five different examples of what could be potential names. You know what? I'm going to put those potential names into a poll, into a poll on my community tab so you can all join in and think and sort of vote on which one you think has got the most merit as being the new title for the update. Anyway, people, until next time, you've been awesome. I've been Captain Steve. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again. Heck yes, cheery bye.